What's good YouTube? This is the only big green you go and I'm back again with another deck profile and this deck profile is going to be of zombies for the troop dupe scoop format or June 1st 2007 up until the September 1st 2007 list came out. Some people don't consider this deck a part of the format, which if you look at the time it was released, it technically is legal for the format and was legal for the format. It just missed out on the last SJC in August, and it had two and a half weeks of of legality in the format. And uh, it was, if you do the math, it's basically one fourth of the format that it was legal in. It's just because it missed out on that last SJC, a lot of people don't consider it allowed for the format. It's a much like the Xerion and GOAT format debate, which I, of course, you guys know if you've seen my channel, I allow Xerion and GOAT. And I also allow Tactical Evolution in this format. It's just a super fun deck to play with. And it's definitely not the best deck of the format. If you go and look at September 1st when they did neuter the Troop Dupe Scoop combo, Perfect Circle still was the best deck. The various anti-meta decks still continue to top. Various burn decks still continue to do well, and zombies came on the scene. It's not like if you allow this stuff into the format, it's going to completely destroy the format. Zombies is a good deck, but it's definitely, like, by far not the best deck. That goes to Perfect Circle Monarch, DDT, and uh, stuff like the, the various T-Heroes and J-Hero decks. Anyways, I'm going to get right in onto the deck profile because I'm rambling. The two ill blood. What you can play over this guy if the opponent isn't wanting you to play tactical stuff would be a vampire lord. And then on this one, you can play a third Ryu Koki. But what he does, he's a Gemini monster. So that means whenever he's summoned, he's treated as a normal monster. And then you have to Gemini summon him, which is a normal summon. But how you get around that is with stuff like Pyramid Turtle and then uh, Reborn cards like Book of Life, Premat, and Call of the Haunted. So you can get around it that way to where you can special summon him and then use his Gemini summon. But what he does when he is Gemini summon is you once per turn, you can special summon a zombie monster from your hand or either player's graveyard. And then whenever he's destroyed, the monster summoned by his effect are destroyed. The next card is the Double Ryukoki, which you can play at three if your opponent is not allowing the tactical stuff. He's a 24k beater with 2k defense, so in this format, or in this game, or at this time, like those are like some solid stats for a monster. He can kamikaze with things like Jinzo and the Monarchs, and then he has an effect where at the end of the damage step, if he battled a warrior or spellcaster type monster, he destroys it, so it allows you to deal with stuff like Demok as well. Then the thing that makes him even more crazier is he can be searched out with this guy, the Triple Pyramid Turtle. Pyramid Turtle, whenever it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you get to special summon a zombie monster from your deck with 2,000 or less defense. So he gets you every zombie monster. And even if your opponent's not allowing you to use tactical evolution stuff, he can still get out your vampire lord from the deck as well. The next zombie monster is going to be the last card in the deck from tactical evolution. The triple zombie master. Zombie Master, once per turn, you can send a monster from your hand to the graveyard to special summon a zombie monster, and it does have to be a level 4 or lower. So the crazy thing about this guy, what you can do is you can special summon himself back. If you have one already in the graveyard, you can special summon himself and then go grab a third zombie monster. So if you have card of safe return up, you're drawing two to three cards off of him, which gets crazy. And you can set up just some OTK plays, too, with him. What I would play over him, though, if your opponent is not allowing Tactical Evolution, you can play a second Snipe Hunter, you can play a second Ryza, and you can play like a Jinzo, or you could just play Triple Giant Rat to get you to your Pyramid Turtle faster. The last zombie monster in the deck, you guys definitely can see this coming, the One Spirit Reaper. Spear Reaper is just an all-around crazy card in this format. He was just hard to deal with, and he just stalls. And the fact that you can search him out with Sangin in this deck, and then you also have the Pyramid Turtle, which exclusively this deck has. It's just crazy how you can get him out so easily. And the, it's very hard to deal with him. You had to use something like a Brain Control to target Destruction him, or things like Ring of Destruction, or like your Ryza if he's face up. And then the main way would basically be the Snipe Hunter. But if you don't have any of those cards, you're definitely out of luck. Unless if you want to waste a power spell like Snatch Steel on it. The next card in the deck, the Triple Card Trooper. He lets you mill anywhere from 1 to 3 cards. And then he gains 500 attack for each card. So at the end of the day, he's going to be a 19k beater until the end of your turn. And whenever he's destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you get to draw a card. 
This is going to be the last of the machines of the deck. The triple Cyber Dragon. This is a crazy card, especially if you're going second and you see him, you're going to be a happy person. He can set up some OTK plays or just push in and your opponents, if your opponent can't deal with it, they're basically going to lose the game in a few turns because you just get the momentum on your side. The one of Ryza, which you can play at two if they're not allowing the Tactical Evolution stuff. He basically lets you spin a card back to the top of a target player's deck. You target a card, and he returns it to the top of their deck. You mainly do that on there. If they have no spell or traps, you definitely want to do that on a monster because it sets them back so much, and you gain the momentum just by summoning him. If they do have a back row and you're scared that it might be something like a Mirror Force, you can, you can just spin that back and then attack over the monster since he is pretty big. So you can always play him like that. Technically, you can spin your own stuff back, but that would be kind of dumb. And then the last three monsters of the deck, the one of Sangin, the one of Morphing Jar, and the one of Snipe Hunter. Morphing Jar in this deck serves a crazy purpose, not just in the drawing the five cards, but when you discard your zombie monsters, if you draw into something like a zombie master or you have a zombie master on the field already, you can just start looping zombie masters with himself and your pyramid turtles in the graveyard or spirit reaper and just draw off of that if you have card to save return. So he serves more than just the discard draw five. He can actually set up some OTK plays if you hold him until the right moment. Saying it, of course, searches basically like everything level four and lower. And then Snipe Hunter is there for your removal, which is another guy that I would play at too if they're not allowing Tactical Evolution. And then on to the spell cards, the Triple Book of Life. I would say this is the best spell card in the deck, but the next card is definitely by far the best spell card in the deck. It's basically your Monster Reborn for Zombie Monsters. You target a Zombie Monster in your graveyard, and then you target a monster in your opponent's graveyard. You banish your opponent's monster, special summon your Zombie Monster. So the downside is you do have to have a Zombie Target in your grave. You can't just freely banish something. And again, it could be a downside because you can't just special summon a Zombie Monster and not banish an opponent's monster. Both of those requirements have to meet before you can play the card. And then... The card of safe return, this is the definitely the best spell card in the deck, just because it, your zombie masters basically become special summon a card, draw a card, pretty much. Your ill blood becomes special summon a card, draw a card uh, with this card. Book of Life becomes special summon, draw a card. <laughs> it's just crazy. Anytime you just make a play, you're drawing with it. And that's why I consider it the best spell card in the deck. And it would be cool if I could... If you could somehow make this work in other decks of the format, but the it, I don't think it could work in Perfect Circle Monarch because Treeborn Frog wouldn't work with this because you would have the back row. But it would be cool if somebody could figure out a way to make this work in other decks of the format. I just think this card is super like super insane, and it sucks that this is like the only deck that it can really be abused in. This next card, I might consider taking out the double creature swap. I might take it out for two machine dupes, but I don't know yet. But the main plays that I make with this card is I give my opponent the Pyramid Turtle. I swing over the Pyramid Turtle. If it's during uh, my opponent's turn or if it's or during my turn and I haven't normal summoned, I'll bring out the Ill Blood. If it's during my turn and I have normal summoned, I'll bring out the Ryu Koki. And then another thing that I like to do is give them my card trooper. Of course, don't mill with card trooper, but I give them my card trooper. And since he has 400 attack, it's basically just a direct attack at that point, And you get to draw a card. And then, of course, you have the Sangin, where you can give them Sangin. Or if you have a face-down morphing jar, you could give them the face-down morphing jar. The... Uh, spell and trap removal of the format. Heavy, MST, just standard stuff. Power 4 of the format, Confiscation, Pot of Avarice, Snat Steel, and Pre-Mat, which is even more crazy in this deck because you play Card of Safe Return, and if you bring back something with the Ill Blood, Gemini Summon Ill Blood, you can go off, draw cards, and just Special Summon stuff if you have all the stuff set up, like with the Card of Safe Return. The final spell card in the deck, the one of Brain Control. You just mainly take control of opponent's monster, swing in for game or take control of opponent's monster and just tribute over it and then there's only four trap cards that i play in this deck and it's just the power four traps the mirror force and tt for your mass monster removal the ring just for of course just gaming your opponent after you've swung in for big stuff or just dealing with a monster that's scary 
And then, of course, the call of the haunted can be crazy. If you have card of safe return up, bring back that ill blood. Gemini summon the ill blood. There's a draw card, and then ill blood effect a special summon. Draw draw another card. You just draw two cards, and you've got two monsters back from the grave, include like not including your ill blood. It's just crazy that this that you can pull stuff like this off. And then the fusion monsters, which you don't really need unless if you're playing like overload fusion, future fusion, or metamorphosis. But these are the fusion monsters if you do want to see them. But uh, the only really important ones would be like Ryu Senshi if you play meta. If you're playing a machine based deck, of course that's important because it's a machine with limited removal. And then these guys are always really good, especially Chimera Tech. Chimera Tech just wins games. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. And it is, again, it is a bit controversial one. Half the people are probably going to be like, this isn't legal for the format. And other half of the people are going to be like, I think, I think we could allow it which I'm with the group that thinks it should be allowed in the format. But if they don't allow it, just be respectful and just play play like uh, stuff that gets you, like your giant rats, play uh, more Ryza, play more of Snipe Hunter, and then add in Vampire Lord. And then you can add in Deck Dev and make it more of like a control deck instead of a, you know, a spammy deck. So you can definitely tune it to where it's legal if they aren't allowing tactical evolution but if you ever run into me i'm allowing tactical evolution so you guys can definitely play it on me but it is a fun deck i definitely recommend it and just have the vampire lords on the side and other stuff just in case if your opponent doesn't want you playing tactical evolution anyways this has been the only big green you go i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will be bringing more of this format and I also will be bringing more of May 2002 stuff. Just let me know what you guys want to see more of, and I can bring it. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I've got to say. This has been a long video. Uh, I'll see you guys.